Hello there. In addition to solving right triangles, meaning finding all the sides and angles of a triangle, one other thing that trigonometry allows us to do with oblique triangles, which tr with triangles that are not right triangles, is to find the area of triangles. Now we all know from geometry, I hope, that to find the area of a triangle, I'll just draw a triangle here for you, quickly. Let's say I have a triangle that looks like this. To find the area of a triangle, we draw a perpendicular line from one side down to the opposite side, making sure that, as, again, that it's perpendicular, that this is a right angle. And we call that, let's dot that line, just so we know this is not a real side of the triangle you know that that side is called the height of the triangle. This is the height of the triangle. And we call this opposite side, the side to which we've drawn the height, the base. And we all know from, um, trigon uh, excuse me, from geometry, I hope, is that the area of a triangle is one-half base times height. So, what if I give you a triangle for example, that looks like this. Use the same general shape. Doesn't have to be the same shape. And let me say that this is a 42 degree angle right here. Okay, this side is 10 units long and this side is 12 units long. And I were to ask you to find the area of that triangle. Well, what's the missing piece? The missing piece is obviously the height, right? So let's draw the height in and talk about how we can find, assume that's a straight line, okay? This is our height. In other words, it's perpendicular to that side, okay? Let me draw, put an H in here. Okay, and I wanted to find the area of that triangle. Well, the first thing I can do is take a look at just one side of this bigger triangle. I, wanna, I want you to look at, for me, this triangle right here. This triangle in red. I'm going to take this bigger triangle apart, okay? Look at that triangle in red. That's a right triangle, isn't it? So I should be able to find H, shouldn't I? If I know this angle and this side and this side, that's the opposite side for the angle. H is the opposite side for the angle and tends the hypotenuse in that right triangle. So I should be able to determine the height of that triangle. The height of that triangle would be well, let's do it a different way. Let's not skip any steps. Don't want to lose you. So I would know that the sine of that angle, 42 degrees, is h over 10. If I multiply both sides by 10, I discover that the height is 10 times the sine of 42 degrees. I'm not going to solve that for you right now. Okay, we'll solve that at the end. But if I know that's h, I can still use my height in my area formula. One half base times height. So that's going to be one half times what's my base? Well, my base in the actual triangle was 12, wasn't it? 12 times 10 times the sine of 42 degrees. That's my area, isn't it? Again, a half times the base, which is 12, times my height, which I already said was 10 times the sine of 42 degrees. This is usually written as a formula, and the formula can take three different forms. But I want to show you that you really don't have to memorize a formula, and you certainly don't have to memorize three formulas. Okay, by the way, the answer to this, if you really want to know, is 40.15 square units. 
when you do the math. But the answer isn't important to us right now. So here's the deal. If I've got a triangle, there's a triangle. Let me label some things. Let's call this side A, side B, side C, my opposite angles, capital A, capital C, capital B. I can find the area of any triangle. Now I want you to look back at this original one here. What did we use? We said it was one half, one half times the product of the two sides that are around that 42 degree angle. See that? The 10 and the 12 are the two sides around that 42 degree angle times the sine of the angle. So I could write three different formulas for this triangle. So for example, my area could be 1 half times A times B, and the angle between them, here's A, here's B, the angle between them is C, the sine of capital C. But couldn't I just as easily have written 1 half B times C, B times C, times the sine of capital A, which is the angle in between them. Or, even still, 1 half A times C, times the sine of B. What I'm trying to tell you here is the formula, in my opinion, doesn't matter a whole lot. You should write a formula down, okay, and you could use any one of these, but which side corresponds to which letter is not important. The area of a triangle, of an oblique triangle, if you're given a circumstance where you have two sides and the angle between them, that's commonly called SAS, situation where you got two sides and the angle between them is one half times the product of the two sides times the sine of the angle between them which is sometimes also called the included angle okay and again I don't want you to get hung up on letters so I try to um, de-emphasize formulas here and give you a formula that you can use with any triangle, any orientation, any set of uh, variables used for sides. Okay, so the area of an oblique triangle, if you're given two sides and the angle between them again, is one half times the product of the two sides you're given times the sine of that angle in between them. Okay? And one other thing I should point out before we leave this is, and we'll use this other times as well, please notice that the angle that's in between two sides is the third letter. So the angle in between little a and little b is big C. The angle in between little b and little c, the included angle, is angle big A. The angle in between, or the included angle for sides a and c, is, is angle big B. Okay? Thanks.